Hello and welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. And today we're going to continue discussing um, distortion functions and spectral risk measures. Uh, you remember last time we introduced the idea of a distortion function as pricing a simple Bernoulli 0 or 1 um, contract uh, where the x-axis gives you the probability of the loss and then the indicated value gives you the price that you would charge for that contract. What I want to do today is continue this and discuss pricing a more uh, realistic risk. And the way this is typically done, we've, we've, uh, I'm assuming you've loaded the libraries um, that we had on the previous video, and we're going to now look at this figure, which is figure 10.5 from uh, the Pricing Insurance Risk book, um, which should be uh, compared to uh, this figure 10.3 that we had last time. This is for one... Uh, binary uh, risk. And now all of a sudden we're going to jump to a different looking picture for a realistic risk. So let's just look at the, the left hand side here. Um, the blue line is giving us um, the loss, potential loss outcomes from this risk. And they're ranked from the smallest loss outcome to the largest and indexed by their probability um, uh, of non-exceedance. So, you know, the, the median here would be at, at 0.5, the 90th percentile would be above 0.9. 10th percentile would be above 0.1 and so forth. So said another way, this blue line is equal to the inverse of the distribution function of x. If you imagine a distribution function that increases uh, like an s function, if you reflect it in a 45 degree line, uh, you get this line, uh, the blue line here, and it's mapping a value outcome x to p equals big F of x, the probability that the outcome is less than or equal to x on the x-axis. Um, you can also see that the distance to the x equals 1 line here is the survival function. And if you imagine rotating this plot clockwise by um, 90 degrees, you would get a decreasing uh, function like the uh, survival function. And uh, on the, the y-axis, we're going to consider different uh, asset layers. So if we're supporting writing this risk with the total, total amount of assets A, we can look at a level x and we can imagine we can make a binary contract as we had before. So remember, previously we were looking at this weather derivative, and it paid one if the price in Central Park on a given day was above 28 degrees C. Here we can imagine a, 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 another binary layer that pays one if the uh, loss from this contract is above the level X. Okay, so it's a zero one uh, layer, and it's going to have a loss cost that's going to given, be given by S of X. So S is the survival function, 1 minus the distribution function. So a little confusing, it's going to be measured kind of in from the right-hand side here, uh, a distance S. That distance is corresponding to this distance up here to the Y equals uh, X curve that we have on this uh, diagram before. And uh, what we said before was we've, we've got this distortion function and it acts to increase these probabilities. So the orange line here is going to increase, in this case, our 0.1 up to 0.3. And again, we're going to measure it from the right. We're going to measure back here. And so we're going to have a certain amount of margin that gets included in here. And as a result, we're going to have a, a premium that we would charge just for this little individual layer. And it's going to be the distance between this P tilde here and 1. And then, uh, as before, again, we want to envisage that uh, all of these layers are fully collateralized. So there's a, a, a dollar standing behind this uh, little contract. And so since the only sources of assets are premium and capital, the remaining amount, this green line here, has to be uh, the capital that's provided, which is analogous to uh, the capital here from G of S up to one that we had previously. Now, what we do then is we aggregate over all of the layers of capital. We integrate, if you will, over all of these layers of capital uh, from zero up to A. And it's an integration. It's not thinking of these uh, X as sort of little $1 layers. Um, the problem with thinking of it as $1 layers is what if this risk is, say, a uniform risk between zero and one? That's only $1 wide, right? So you need to be thinking of this as more like a a uh, layer density cost that you're actually going to integrate. And at this point, I should remind you uh, a couple of things about how you can compute the mean or average value of a random variable. So if we've got x as a random variable, uh, which takes non-negative values, it's between, it's positive, uh, you know, greater than or equal to zero. 
then we, we know its expected value. We would normally write it if it has a density as the integral of x times f, f of x dx. So it's the integral from zero to infinity of the outcome times the probability. And you, again, you're thinking of this as sort of f of x dx gives you the probability that you fall into a little bucket between x and x plus uh, dx. Um, that also equals the integral of the survival function uh, between zero and uh, infinity. And you can see this using the integration by parts trick where you think of s as, as one times s of x. You integrate the one to get x and you differentiate the s of x to get minus f of x dx. And if you'll recall the integration by parts, it's you, you, in, you integrate uh, the first one, leave the second one alone, and then it's minus uh, this integral here, but we've got another minus sign comes in, so that cancels out and we get the plus sign there. And then this first bit, the um, evaluation of x, s of x between zero and infinity. Well, if x is zero, this is zero because zero times anything is zero. And if x is infinity, s of x is zero because it's the survival function and we're, we're assuming it only takes finite values. So this first term goes away and you just get the integral of s of x. Okay, so that's saying that the average of this uh, random variable here up to a is just the integral beneath uh, this survival function is this this area here that we've labeled loss in the middle. Now what your spectral risk measure does is it takes your distortion function that prices each layer so it increases the cost of uh, this layer at x from this amount s of x here to g of s of x which is which is greater and then we just take the area under that distorted orange curve to be our uh, risk measure in this case we're going to interpret that as our premium okay so the definition of our spectral risk measure associated with the distortion g rho sub g of x is going to be the integral of g of s of x and we do the same integration by parts trick so um, we get a term here that disappears we get x coming in from integrating one and then if you differentiate g of s of x you're going to get g prime s of x times f of x and then this second integral you recognize is just the expected value of x times g prime s of x. So the g prime s of x term is acting as a, uh, a risk adjustment. And when we do that, you get a picture that looks in the middle here where we're saying, okay, on average, we've got a loss cost component that's the dark blue piece. Uh, we've got a margin component that's the orange piece and the sum of the two gives us the premium. The complement of that gives us the capital. The total capital we've got here uh, is, is A. Um, and then, you know, often this is drawn out sort of more traditionally in a layer diagram that looks something like this to the right. The, the amounts, the, the areas here are all the same, um, where you're thinking you've got a loss sort of component at the bottom, then a margin component, then a capital component. But the point here is, um, if you were to sell each of these layers of capital, uh, it's not the case that the ones at the bottom are always paid in loss. They are mostly paid in loss, but not always. Sometimes they're actually returned uh, to the to the purchaser of that residual value and equally the ones at the top are not always free and clear capital sometimes they're destroyed uh, and paid paid used to pay losses so you've got a sort of a range of different uh, security residual values that you're selling um, they get they've got different costs that are given by uh, the distance between the orange line and one here uh, and then they average out to the areas shown here so this is sort of the traditional um, picture that we have for uh, working for a realistic risk. And you, you may say, well, how do I square this picture, which was our simple single layer, uh, with this picture? And uh, here we've got uh, figure 10.6 um, from the book, uh, which kind of takes us through that process. So the original picture that we had of the distortion it's uh, useful to look at um, the meanings of the two axes. So if we, if we, let's just go back up to this one. The x-axis here is actually quantifying the security that's being priced because the security maps to the probability of loss to the layer. That defines what the security is. So here you've got securities on the x-axis and you've got the, uh, the most, the sort of tail is on the left hand side because we're dealing with survival functions so they're the in sense the the lowest loss cost but the largest kind of margin markup and then we've got the price on the y-axis now when we move to this picture it's flipped around here we're saying we're selling this layer at x so the y-axis here has become the security and then the x-axis is being used for the price and rather than the price being measured from the left 
uh, the price is being measured from the right. So there's a sort of switcheroo has gone on there. So if you think about what, what do you need to do to, to make that happen, it, you, you want to do it in two steps. The first step is we want to take our original picture and we want to reflect it in a line here that goes from uh, 0, 1 to 1, 0. And that will produce us a picture here. And now what's happened is this uh, the layer axis is going to become the vertical axis and the tail is going to be at the top and the more attritional losses are going to be at the bottom. So now we've moved our diagram to having securities up the y-axis and then price is going to be on the x-axis and it is going to switch, right? It's going to, we're going to flip around uh, the ordering of, uh, on, of the, the price here as we did uh, up there. And then the second thing that we do is rather than considering a uh, zero one risk, we want to consider our, our more gen general risk. So we're going to transform the layer and rather than have it go from zero to one, we're going to apply the inverse of the distribution function to it. And it's going to go from zero up to whatever level of assets that we're considering. And that's going to have transformed this original picture into the revised picture uh, that we're showing here. Finally here, I want to mention um, that in this divide and conquer approach, so what we're doing is uh, on this integral, we're breaking it into Riemann sums and we're saying the integral from zero to infinity is, is the sum of g s of x i times a delta x uh, kind of component. Um, and we're adding up those uh, individual pieces to get us the, the total price, each x i corresponding to a, a layer of the program. And you might say, well, wait a minute, Might, mightn't there be some diversification there and some economies uh, from participating in all of those layers together? And in fact, that turns out not to be the case because uh, the rho G's, these spectral risk measures, have an important property called co-monotonic additivity, uh, which means if you have two risks which are co-monotonic, meaning they're both increasing functions of some underlying variable, then the price of the sum is equal to the sum of the prices. In this case, all of our layers are increasing functions of the underlying loss. So we've got a bunch of little uh, binary uh, layers at different attachment points. They are all increasing functions of the underlying loss X. And so in this case, it is legitimate to say that the price of the sum, that, that bundle um, that we're using to approximate this integral will just be the sum of the prices of the individual layers. And that's a very important uh, fact about spectral, spectral risk measures, which makes this representation work.